Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, today we're going to talk about water and finding water sources. I've touched on this in earlier videos, but I'm going to go a little more in depth on it this time because I've had several people who are at the point in their uh, journey, we'll say, that they're going out and trying to see how long they can thrive in the wilderness with little or no resources. So this is one of the pieces of information we're going to deal with, water. Okay, first off, let's talk about what water does. Water is either level or it's going downhill, period. If it's in a uh, container, it is in a level position within the confine of that container. If it is not, it is on any kind of surface it can flow, it's going to flow downhill, period. So with that in mind, let's show you how water on Earth reacts and gives telltale signs to tell you of its presence. First, the rain's going to evaporate, or evaporate, of course, from the ocean. Come up, become clouds, come out over land and rain. Duh. Where the rain falls causes it to erode into fissures, these fissures flow together to form creeks, springs, rivers, etc., and eventually take the water back to the ocean where the cycle goes over again. Surface water directly from rain. Rainwater falling through the atmosphere can pick up pollutants, so it is not technically pure. It is safer than many other sources of water. So if you can collect rainwater, that is an advantage if what you're collecting with is clean and if the water falling through the atmosphere is itself clean. How would you know? You just got to look where you are. If you're in downtown Manhattan or Detroit or some major city complex or whatever, it's probably got a little bit of pollution falling through the air to you just because of the polluted atmosphere. If you're in the middle of the Rockies, it's probably fairly clean. Not a guarantee because all that air has got to come from the West Coast. But if you're in the middle of clean area, is probably fairly clean falling to you, okay? Now, it is landed upon the surface. That water is now contaminated due to the surface. There are industrial pollutants. There are pesticides. There's fecal matter. There's natural and things that can get into that water, microbes, bacteria, etc. Falling down through the trees to you as it hits leaves and falls off, the water will pick up microbes and other things like this. So if you're under a heavy canopy catching rain, you're not catching pure water. It's been off the trees and the leaves and etc. So that water still needs to be boiled or purified in some way. Okay, the water's made it to the surface. It is now a mud puddle. You can collect that water and allow that water to settle. That turpidity, that dissolved silt, that mud in the water will fall out of it and you can siphon the water off the top. That water still has to be processed. Okay? Now water that has fallen onto ground, okay, now begins nature's natural filtering process. So let's talk about that for a second. Let us say that we have relatively level ground right here. And on this level ground, the water has fallen and it's going to percolate down, let's say eight or nine feet, to where there's another barrier layer. And at that layer, due to compression, compaction, whatever, the water can't go through it. This water will pool up here. It will saturate it just like wet sand and the water level will get higher and higher in there as it fills up. But remember, water is either level or flowing downhill. Any topography that inclines it downhill means that that water is going to flow downhill. As it does so, it extracts out of the ground sand, silt, it dissolves, it whatever. As it flows out, this is undermined. This is reaching underneath and sucking out components out of the ground. As this happens, the ground up here above it 
pushes down. The effect this has in actual real life is you have a level ground. The water level has percolated down to this level. It starts flowing out. As this is removed, this section in the middle right above it begins to push down. As that continues, that section above it gets wider and it pushes down. How it's pushing down, it's undermining it. It's digging it out. The water is dissolving it. And the ground will weigh itself down and it's like a conveyor belt sinking. Until eventually you have this classic V like that. This is a water channel. This is where the water has eroded from ground level underneath, leaving this V. So that when you're looking at that ridge side up there and there's a V, what does that tell you? Either A, surface water running off, or B, sub-surface uh, water eroding out. If I go to the bottom of that hill at the bottom of that V, I should find water right there because the lay of the land is going to tell you that erosion is going to erode these hills down at the bottom of those V's at some point those V's are going to cut into the ambient water level okay the water table we call it now suppose you've got a hill here is non permeable layer, and here is a hill. Okay? Water falling on the hill percolates down, 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 down. It gets to this non permeable layer and it flows downhill, just like that. So, down and across. Coming through all of that dirt filters it. Any contaminants that were picked up at the surface, any contaminants that were followed through the atmosphere will be purged out by the time it back emerges from this because all this sand, dirt, sediment is filtering it. And many things that live in water require photosynthesis, require oxygen, require sunlight, require whatever. And they ain't getting that underground. That top layer would be, but as it gets deeper and deeper, it's been underground longer and longer and longer and longer. In certain places I've um, seen geologists that have told me that they calculated out that the water that fell on top of this particular mountain had taken over 8,000 years to emerge out the base of the mountain because of all that percolation it had to do through rock to actually come out. So that water was virtually pure when it comes out. So I have discovered a hill And here at the base of this hill, up a few feet from the top, I've got that V, and right here I got flowing water coming directly out of that hill. Can I use it? First thing you do, stand there, you look uphill. Is this runoff from the top running along the surface that has caused this V? Or is this water coming out? If it's runoff, I should have that long V. Because that means water coming from the surf from the surface, running over the surface has cut that V. Like a slide when you were little in a playground. It's made a slide. But what if I get up there and there is no V? There's just a rock or a smooth side, and then here's this water. That tells me that, that is the water table within that hill, and that water is pretty much safe coming out because it has been filtered through all of that. This is not a surface or a surface subduction coming back to the top, and that's where water flows along the surface. It goes into a section for a short amount of time and pops back out further downhill due to gravity. This is water that's coming out of a layer in that hill, and that water should be straight pure, should be safe to drink as it is. If it has no taste, or if it doesn't taste funny, doesn't smell funny, no smell, 
no discoloration. It looks to be pure, straight, clear water. Take a little bit and put it around your mouth. Swish it around a little bit. Spit it out. Any discomfort, any feeling, any whatever. No. Take a small amount, like a half a shot glass. Swish it around and hold it in your mouth for a little bit. Spit it out. Nothing. Swallow about a half shot glass. No reaction. Small amounts. Why am I doing that? You never know in this modern day what is up in there that's some sort of chemical that you can't smell, taste, touch off the brand and may be in that water. Yes, I just said it's filtered, but I'm not standing there with you. So we have to err on the side of caution. What is up here on top of this hill? Go look. Is this forests? Old forest? That's good. Because that's been there. That's established. Any uh, man-made contamination should have leached out by now. What if I get up there on the top of that hill and it's a big industrial field of some kind where it's, uh, let's say, a crop like cotton or some other uh, crop being grown that's not an edible crop? That becomes suspect, doesn't it? Because pesticides used in non-edible crops like cotton you don't have to worry about it ending up in the material to be eaten because it's not going to be eaten. So if it's vegetables or food, it comes under a certain type of pesticide can be used on it. Those that are not for food, like cotton, can use more powerful stuff because this isn't going to be eaten and that's going to contaminate the soil. So I want to know what's on top of that hill. If there's nothing on top of that hill, it's old growth, this water's emerging like I just said, that should be pure water fresh water ready to go now different kinds of wells okay understand the concept that the way your water works at your home when you turn that tap is you have a great big tank that's sitting on a tower there's a pipe that takes the water all the way up to the top and then there's a big pipe that brings that water down. This is a water tower. They pump the water up to the top and the weight of all that water pushing on that pipe running to your tap where you turn the thing and hold your glass under is all that weight pushing down on that pipe. That's what creates that pressure. So you don't have to have a pump at your house to push the water. That's why. When this occurs naturally in nature, okay, we've got another one of them hills, and it's come down here, but this hill naturally has a little bit of a, a bow in it, in that unpermeable area. The water's come down from the top, and it's hit this layer, and it can't go through it easy. This water table builds up inside the hill. At point X, a crack forms right there, and that water cuts its way out and then bubbles up to the surface. It'll blow a couple feet up to the air. This is acting like a water tank. Pressure from all that water uphill has finally found a place to pop out. We call this an artesian well. It looks like you broke a water main. Water bubbles straight up. I live close to a, uh, a large river down here, and... If you go down that river, say, I think 20, 22 miles down river, there's an artesian well in the river that blows water up like one or two feet above the standard water level of the river where it's blowing up, where it found the crack, and that's where that aquifer blows water up. It's like a water hose is broken or a water main's broken. Water just constantly bubbling up like a fountain. That's what causes artesian wells. All right. You've heard this term before. A spring, a cool spring. Now those are kind of descriptively slightly different. A spring is simply where you have a rough ground level that comes up here, forms a little saddle. Down the hill a little bit right here, you have water coming out of the ground. This forms a spring. It means it come, the water table has come to the surface right there, and it's coming out. 
but the temperature of the water is not much different than the basic air temperature. It would be a little cooler, but not cold. If you have one and that water coming out of that well is cold to the touch any time of year, we call that a cool spring, and that's an indicator that that water is coming from a much greater depth, much greater pressure, because that water has been, the ground ambient temperature down so many feet is like 50-something degrees year-round down here. And so if that water's coming out at 48 or 49 degrees, that water's been sitting in that cold rock a long time. It's filtered and it's cold. So you hear the term cool spring. It was a cool spring. People would turn these into a form of refrigeration. They'd have the water flow into a box and they'd put glass jars of foodstuffs and let the water flow out. And this was acting to keep it at a constant temperature. You've heard the thing of a spring house and things like that. Someone would go over one of these springs and build a building to enclose it and protect it for their water source and use it as refrigeration for food. Again, a spring house or a cool spring. Okay? Now, those are just a couple of ideas of how water gets from being up there to in the ground and how that water is going to reemerge. Now you have other kinds of water. You have seeps where it just comes out in little trickles between rocks. You have it where the water will build up to a certain level and then you get a flow. And then if you don't have a lot of rain coming in, the water level will drop down. It's because in this hill, here's the weak link where it flows out. But if the water level is not sufficiently above that, it doesn't leak out. It holds it like a bowl. Okay? A coyote well, that is something I've talked about in my earlier videos. And what that is is you go next to a water source that has got running water or whatever, but for whatever reason you don't want to drink that water. It's green. It's slimy. It's got a lot of stuff in it, a lot of particulate in it. And I've got a nice sandy sandbar right here on the edge of this. I go a couple of feet out of the water and I dig straight down foot, foot and a half, two feet. I let hydraulic pressure force the water through into that well. So that water in that well, after the tepidity is settled, will be filtered. Now I take that water and I boil it and cleanse it. It's cleaner water. If I have to drink raw water, I'm going to drink that instead of that raw swamp water. You see what I'm saying? Water is the great solvent. It dissolves so many things. It brings down mountains. It does all of that job. And so it's rarely by itself and pure. It only has something in it. It's carrying something, a load of some kind of either sediment, silt, clay, pesticides, whatever. And if you're situationally aware, if you're environmentally aware to where, like I showed, I found a hill and I've got water coming out of it. Well, that water should be, ah, look up. Is this water a V? So is that draining from up top? There's no V. All right, it's draining out of the water level of that thing. What's on top of this? Was it agricultural? Was it industrial? Was it something that looks okay? I don't seem to see a lot of contamination. Then that water should have a much higher chance of being safe as is. Only by looking and taking the time to add up all these questions can you ensure that what you're doing is going to provide you the safest drinking water. Knowing that Murphy's Law exists, so do everything in your power to protect yourself. Hope this uh, answers some questions for you guys. If there's any questions or comments you'd like to make, please do below. And if you wouldn't mind, please hit subscribe and that little bell. Till next time, I'm Blackie. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.